Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the first CPU idle time measurement in PageSpeed Insights. I will preface this video by saying in Lighthouse 6.0, this time will be removed in, it, in the next major iteration. So as of now, it's a depreciated measurement that is going to be replaced. But as it's still live, I'm going to talk about it now. So the first CPU idle time is one of six measurements that Lighthouse and PageSpeed Insights use to compile a final performance score. And as we've mentioned, it will eventually be removed, but it's still being used to calculate your score. So the first CPU idle time measures generally how long it takes the page to become minimally interactive. Now, there is discrepancy between this metric and how real people are able to tell if the page is interactive or not. But what it generally means is almost all of the elements that are on the screen can be clicked and are interactive and the page responds to any sort of input. So if you click on it, you swipe or you scroll and it's able to interact, then that's typically the CPU idle time. Now, if the element is off the screen, it will not be calculated in this measurement typically because it's only for the content that's initially in the viewport, which is gonna be the most important for your website going forward. You don't wanna to have to have a footer, a video in your footer affecting your interactive time for the rest of your website, and it doesn't. That's why the metric only counts content in the viewport. Now, oftentimes people get confused between the first CPU idle time and the time to interactive time, which, they're very similar, but they're not identical. So they both measure when the page is supposed to be ready for user input. But this first CPU idle time occurs when the user is able to interact with the page, the first time they're able to. The time to interactive is supposed to be when the user is fully able to interact with the entire page. So. The CPU idle time is when they can start to interact. The time to interactive is when they're able to fully interact. And on my site, there's about a 0.8 second discrepancy. That could be some JavaScript that's loading in the background, maybe if it's for the menu. Um, on, <laughs> on CNN, there's a very large discrepancy. There's a five second discrepancy between the content in view and the content in the footer being able to be interacted with. And this is a difficult metric to improve. The first CPU idle time needs to have a very strict amount of time to get a green score. So I have 3.2 seconds, and to get a green score currently, you need to score around a zero to 4.7 for the CPU idle time, which will be the top 75 percentile. A 4.8 to a 6.5 is considered average, so the top 50 to 74 percent of websites. Anything over 6.5 seconds is typically rated as slow and is the bottom half of websites on the internet, so they're going to be the slowest group. Now, the First CPU idle time can be improved basically by the same ways to improve your interactive time. And the time to interactive can be improved on a number of ways, particularly by reducing main thread time. As I covered in the speed index video, reducing main thread time typically comes down to reducing the amount of code you're serving, particularly JavaScript. Third-party JavaScript will consume most of your CPU, especially on mobile devices which will just take forever for it to fully process. Particularly if you serve an asset, let's say you have a live chat widget, no matter who your provider is, if it's something that's only being interacted to by desktop users, then you would probably wanna not serve it for mobile users. They're typically large, they have a lot of JavaScript, and it could interfere with their ability to scroll and interact with the rest of your website. Most users don't have a top of the line phone. I personally am rolling with a Google Pixel 4 XL, but most users, even in America, aren't rolling with the top-of-the-line flagship device. 
Page Spin Insights runs it on the equivalent of a Motorola, I think it's a Motorola G4. So it's a couple hundred dollar device, but it's by no means a top of the line flagship device from a main, major manufacturer. So just keep that in mind when you're serving assets to third to mobile users that are third party. Other thing is just making sure if you're on WordPress, the theme, the plugins you're using, don't serve an overabundant amount of JavaScript. And the only thing is avoid using too many tracking services and tracking codes. This is one that gets a lot of people is when you use a lot of tracking services, they can have a very large impact on the interactive time for mobile devices. If you have something that's recording clicks, maybe heat mapping, it can particularly hurt the paid, well, the user's ability to interact with the website, regardless of where it's being loaded on the page. So while it may have a large impact on the time to interactive, it's going to have an even larger impact on the CPU idle time. Because if the CPU idle time, which is content and viewport, is not able to be interacted with at all because you're recording what they're doing or you're tracking clicks or you're just using an overabundance of tracking services, it's going to cause the user to be more likely to bounce off the page because they think the page is broken and it's frozen. So by having a lower CPU idle time, it allows users to get some interaction on the page, which is very important. Otherwise, that's all I have to say about the first CPU idle time. If you have any questions about it, you can feel free to post them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.